I was just wondering how uh, Mr. Jordan, my other Republican colleagues, would uh, would uh, react to a uh, proposal to make things uniform by uh, uh, stopping the program for Cuba and making that an individual case-by-case -case basis, as it is for Venezuela, for Ukraine, et cetera. I think we spoke on that with what we passed on the committee. Well, <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me, yeah, well, we're here now, right? I mean, so when we, we, I mean, we're the Rules Committee. We can make any amendment in order if we want to. My, 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 my fear is that my Republican friends who are chairs are, are, are making uh, it clear that they want no amendments in order. But would, would Mr. Jordan, you be open, or Mr. McCall or Mr. Green, would you be open to revisiting the, uh, the uh, issue with regard to the Ukrainians? I mean, there was an amendment. I mean, Ms. Jayapal offered an amendment. She's offered it again. Uh, would, would you, I, I'm not even asking you to support it, but would you be open to having it brought to the floor so there could be a debate and people could vote however they wanted to? If, if Mr. Nadler offered an amendment to get rid of the Cuban family reunification parole, I, I would oppose that. And if, I don't know if you're going to make well, that I, I asked, that was not my question. I, uh, my question was if th there's an amendment, there's no amendment that I know of right now um, uh, that's pending on the Cuban humanitarian parole, but there is one on the Ukrainian one. Uh, Ms. Jayapal has that amendment. I mean, would would you be okay? Would you be uh, you could you can oppose it, but would you be uh, open to allowing us to bring it to the floor so that we can debate it and people could vote up either way on it? Would you be uh, would you be open to that? I think if I could chip in, yeah. uh, you did, did you want me to or I, I mean all I, I want all, all three. Uh, yeah. My perspective on this is that the current crisis is because we're violating the laws on how the asylum process should be working. And that's why people are pouring into the country because they see all the exceptions that are being made. And, and so I think the point of this legislation that came out of the judiciary side is to just go back to the way the laws are written. But there's a difference, as you know, between asylum and humanitarian parole. And, we are, and, and the, the conversation was about that you're making an ex exception for Cubans on humanitarian parole that you extend to no other nationality. Um, we have Ukrainians who are experiencing uh, the most horrific circumstances due to Putin's war crimes against them. Isn't that the whole nature of the asylum process? A person is no, being it, persecuted by their country no, or whatever? Uh, I mean, that's the whole point uh, of the this, asylum this, process again, and the law that we begin with. There's a difference between asylum and humanitarian parole. Um, asylum, you have to have a well-founded fear of persecution. Many of the Ukrainians who are here right now, who are being here under this program that the Biden administration has extended may not necessarily fit the strict criteria of a well-founded fear of persecution. But we know, but we know that it would be dangerous to send them home. Um, there are a number of nationalities that fit into that category. Um, and so there is, a, there is a difference. That's one of the reasons why we have temporary protected status uh, for certain um, groups of immigrants, because the situation in their country is, is terrible and it is potentially dangerous, but they may not fit that criteria. So there are two things. So on the asylum stuff, as Mr. Castro pointed out, the bill that is before us um, is quite harsh. He used the example of a, a Uyghur uh, fleeing China, uh, coming to our border and being forced to stay in Mexico. Um, so that's, that's one thing. But we're talking about humanitarian parole. And so all I'm asking you is would you, you don't even have to vote for it, is whether or not the Jayapal Amendment, which basically says uh, that um, the Ukrainians who are here, um, you know, can basically remain here and that this program will continue for them. That's all. I'm just, can, uh, you know, I'm just, I, I'm just asking, can, can actually we bring an amendment to the floor that would do that? You could vote however you want to, and you can check with your team and staff and come up with all kinds of talking points why it's a bad idea. But I think that, you know, given the fact that we are making an exception for one group of nationals. I mean, there is a, a horrific, brutal, savage war going on in Ukraine. Um, I don't know. M m does anyone want to add? No, I, I, had a, I had a war crimes hearing. Yeah. And it, I, I agree with you. You and I both yeah, agree I, on this I, issue. I, yeah. um, I think HR2, though, clearly says that individuals are paroled in the United States, are protected yep. in, in this bill. And I don't know how more plain language I can make it. So what about the ones that would come? So, so they, I think you get a so, case. so if you're here now, yeah. then you're you're okay. But but I mean, we, that's assuming that Putin's war of aggression stops. 
So if you come tomorrow, you know, let's say this bill becomes law today. So you come tomorrow, you're out of luck just because, I mean, why would, why would we, why, would, why, why wouldn't we, why would we be so, why would we do this? Mr. I mean, Castro. Political asylum, I'm sorry, but no, no, political pol asylum is always uh, available on a case-by-case -case basis. Right, and it's really hard to get. Um, and, um, you know, I, you know I, we have dealt with, with, Im with immigrants and refugees who have fled some of the most horrific situations who don't quite meet the standard to be able to prove um, to the courts that, in fact, they have a well-founded fear of Putin. Fear of the it is a very, very high standard. Fear of the Taliban, fear of, uh, yeah, and you fear know, of uh, Putin, fear right. of uh, the CCP persecuting right. uh, Uyghur Muslims. I think that's why we set up political asylum, fear of persecution. But let, I want to say, Ranking yeah. Member, I think... I, I, I don't think fear of Putin, I mean, I, I, you know, to me, I don't think fear of Putin qualifies for political asylum in our courts. Yeah, Mr. Castro, sure. Mr. Really, yeah. 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 A, a really quick, just to give some context and why your question is incredibly important. Uh, people on parole need to renew their parole each year. So current parolees, it's true, would write out the year, but the new criteria in HR2 this legislation would make them ineligible for renewal. So it's true that the people here would continue on for the year, for year, but the coming year, they're gone. So that's what's at stake for each of those communities that I mentioned and one of them that you were just yeah. talking about. And why, why, would, why would we even do that to the Ukrainians who have fled this terrible violence uh, and unrest? In, in, I mean, I, I, like, what, 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 do, what do people think, Mr. Nadler? I'd, I'd simply point out that... Uh, when we're talking about parole for Ukrainians, I mean, in addition to what you just said about the, the year, the Ukrainians want to go home. Right. They want to stay here only until that war ends and they can go home. This is not a class of people who want to stay here. We're not talking about, uh, well, we may be talking about a few people who claim political asylum, but for the, and, 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 and they should be uh, subject to the normal asylum requirements. But we're talking for the most part, 99%, about people who want to go home who may come here last year or in the last few months since, since the invasion in the last year or next month or the month after that or however long this war lasts, but want to go home as soon as it's safe to do so and, and the war is over. And that's what uh, is prevented by this bill. Right. So if I understand this correctly, um, if, if this bill were to become law today, if you are a Ukrainian who came here tomorrow, you would not be able to get parole, um, number one. Number two, if you're a Ukrainian who is here, you have a year, and then what do you do, what, what do, you do after a year? You've you got to get out, even if the war is still going on. Yeah, yeah you've got to get out, yeah. Does anyone, I mean, disagree, I mean am I, are, we, are we misreading something here? I mean, really? Oh, my God, I, I yield back. <laughs> 